Good morning, my outstanding friends. Today I am going to prove to you that the earth is a corpse, precisely what Jesus Christ said. Okay, my friends, this is going to be fun. A desert or a flood deposit? They want to talk about Genesis. Was this reality? The flood, the giants, the dragons, all this stuff? Well, let's, let's sort through it. I, I can show you some pretty good evidence to support precisely what I say, one way or the other. All right, so stick around. Okay, my friends, hold on to your hats because I am about to shock you to the core. I have made an allegation right along that the earth is nothing but biology and nothing exists except biology. And that, my friends, is muscle tissue. I am going to explain something to you. This is not unknown. This was documented and even Jesus Christ said this himself. Everybody knows this verse, I'm almost certain. This is Genesis 6.4. There were giants in the earth in those days. There were giants in the earth in those days. Then after that, after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown, Hercules, and so forth. It's, it's very plain to see, and that's in the Bible. This is of quite importance here. Jesus said, let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished and will rule over the all. Whatever that means, I don't know. But you will become troubled, and you will become astonished. The ruling part, no clue. But he also says that the earth is a corpse. And he also says right here, Jesus said, Recognize what is in your sight, and that which is hidden from you, has been hidden from you, has been kept hidden from you, will become plain to you, for there is nothing hidden which will not become manifest. You have to seek. It's not hidden anymore. Once again, from the Nag Hammadi text, which were the secret sayings that Doubting Thomas recorded when Jesus was alive. Look into it, the Nag Hammadi text. They are end times text. And I'm going to tell you right now, it looks like it's getting pretty close. Jesus said, Whoever has come to understand the world has found only a corpse. Exactly. It's that the world is a, is a gigantic corpse. I'm showing this very clearly. And whoever has found a corpse is superior to the world. It means you know you have come to real to, to be able to understand reality. I guess that's what that, that's what it means. I don't know. Superior to the world. Well, you take it for whatever it means to you. All right, this, all of the ancient writers before Jesus Christ wrote the same things. And here's one metamorphosis, which was Ovid. All right, and he's and immediately, before he even starts his, his opus, and I mean an opus magnum, pfft, gigantic, uh, oh, I don't know how many books, I think at least 15. In the opening lines of his poem, which I called a poem then, In nova fert animus mutatus desire formos corpora, I intend to speak of forms changed into new entities, things changed into new things. That's what metamorphosis is. Accompanying this theme is often violence inflicted upon a victim whose transformation becomes part of the natural landscape. If you read back through the mythology, it is nothing but violence. It is just the most devastating amount of violence you can imagine. And, and it appears that it was all tried to be wiped off the face of the earth by this intervention by God who said, let's just wipe them off with a gigantic flood. And that's what happened. And some remained. And then there is a, there, there's supposedly, you know, never-ending life. Immortal. So what does it mean? Immortal means they're still around somewhere. 
Anyway, this talk, he talks about being, they could change into anything they wanted to change into. There was a great variety among the types of transformations take place, from human to inanimate objects, like the Nile River or something, into constellations, into animals, into plants, from animals like ants and funguses and mushrooms into humans, from one sex to another, from one color to another. Jupiter could turn into a female or a male. Jupiter gave birth. He was supposed to be the gigantic male god and the superior god in this realm. And I think he's the one that went against God Almighty, who put him in charge. I have a, I have, I've gone very, 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 very deep into this. And every single, I'll show you the rest of them to talk about this. But this is all about the things that were written by Hesiod, who primarily was the first writer in history. He wrote what Zeus's daughters told him to write. That was about 800 BC. The flood was not much earlier than that. It was about five, six hundred years earlier. And Velikovsky did all this work and recorded all this stuff. So I'm showing you that the, the earth literally is a corpse. Jesus said that. And now it's proven. All right? And it is disturbing. All right, so now we go into Apollodorus. Now, Apollodorus wrote his works, and a, a lot of them. This, these were the real writers of the ages. And he wrote what Hesiod and all the rest of them recorded prior to him. Because there was a bunch of these people were interested in their true history. He's writing about Zeus, who was the god of this solar system. Then the Titans. The Olympian gods. Then there was the War of the Giants and Typhon, who was the dragon in the desert. Prometheus, who was the father of mankind, he claims, and molded us out of clay. Deucalion, who is Noah, is Prometheus' son. And he was told by his father, Prometheus, build an ark, which he said build a chest and stock it with provisions and ride out the storm. And that's what Deucalion did. And Noah. And, and it goes down, well, these are all the giants and Typhon, all this stuff. I can show these things. I can show Typhon is exactly identical to what they portray as. And nobody in his right mind would ever, 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 times a thousand evers, ever consider it. Unless, unless you pay attention to what is in front of your face. Nothing that is hidden will remain hidden. Okay, before we get too far into this, I just want to give this guy credit. And he's a, 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 a parent. Okay, I'm really hoping I can get together with these people. This channel is called Is Genesis History. And he's, he's going out and doing the field work and looking at these sandstone blocks. Now, I don't actually have to touch them. I understand the chemistry just by looking at them because of the colors. And I understand the, the, what they are by the way the architecture of the rocks. Now he's talking about beds of dolomite. Now you always talk about the little tendon balls which are the, the uh, interstitium layer. And he's saying they found them this thick with these little tiny balls in them, dolomite balls. And he, you know they did the microscopic, shot, microscopic shots and so forth. So I give him a lot of credit. I'm using his stuff as a teaching tool. Alright, take your time and look at this. I, this is a mind blower, absolutely. Here she is up on this cliff face, and she's looking at this thing here. Well, she's not really looking at it, but she's doing research up here. And what's this cleave in between here? There's a break. What's that all about? And look at that thing. And look at this end little crunchy looking stuff. And how it circles around the circle. What could possibly cause that? Well, let's take a look at the rock I have here in my shop. All right, remember what you're looking at. That's, and then a break here. Now, what is that? All right, let's look at it carefully. You see this? Comes around like this and it has that little squinchy spot on the end and then it comes up to this crease here. All right, so you can see that, I'm sure. Now, let's compare the two. All right, that crease, and of course this is going that way, that's going that way, that's, that's all. This crease is where the tendon locked in to the muscle. All right, you see it here? This is what they call an abrupt transition. Well, I call it that. 
and it comes around just like this and it makes an abrupt transition into the muscle which I showed you or will show you is this is a muscle muscle and that way there is the muscle. The tendon breaks right here there's a layer of glue basically and they come apart but the tendon will remain. This is this is um, the muscly part, gluey part and the tendon um, which is here is is very tough that's why it's sticking straight up like this tough as hell that stuff and it, this would be the same thing and I can show you where there's other ones that just the tendons left this this is a bone here let me see can I move that no all right so but this is a bone and tendons lock into the bones and then they go from the bone well, not, not all tendons lock into bones, but in this case it is a bone style tendon, which is a rope style tendon. And it ropes off of there and locks into the muscle fiber through an abrupt transition. That's why they break flat as a pancake. I mean, it just cleaves straight down. And then you have this weave like this of muscle and connective tissue, layer after layer after layer after layer. And that makes it so tough, it's just unbelievable tough. Tendons are just incredibly tough. And I'll show you this in, in a very good close-up in a minute. But the muscle is just weak, it just falls apart. Because that's, I'll show you what sarcomeres are like. And they show them in, in all this, it, they're everywhere, sarcomeres. And Petra is nothing but sarcomeres. I'm going to show you all this stuff because the earth is nothing but a corpse. And we have to start understanding what our real true history is. Because there's a lot of decisions to be made at the end of your life, I'm going to tell you that right now. Or even during your life that are going to affect the end of your life. All right, so I'm going to, I don't like to get into all this philosophical stuff because I just want to prove what it is. Then you've made, that's up to you. You do anything you want with your life. I, I got to figure it out now for myself, I think. But part of understanding that is what I have to do is to, to try to make other people understand this. If they want to understand it, if not, well, go on your own. It's just like, there's another phrase somewhere in here that says some will see, some won't see, some couldn't care less if they want to see, and then they're never going to see. And don't throw those pearls into the mouths of swine. <laughs> I'm telling you, once I started getting into the text, oh my God, once you get into Hesiod and Ovid and Plato and Herodotus and all of those ancient writers, Apollodorus, oh my God, it will, it's, 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 I don't know, even know what to say. It's upsetting, yes. <laughs> You know, it's scary, absolutely, but it's part of life. So anyway, I'm sorry to go down that road, but I'd like to have that discussion with some people that, that have a lot of knowledge about these ancient texts. I don't. I honestly don't. The Bible, I, I really have never read the Bible. All I have seen is a little clip here, a clip there, people send me, or somehow it just drops in my lap. And, and they all make sense. They all, literally all of them make sense. And they all relate to everybody else's book. Everybody had their own book. And they were all basically the same books. And that's what Velikovsky proved. And that's why they destroyed his life. Because he showed that 3,500 years ago, only, only 3,500 years ago, everything I have that I have shown, all of these bones that are stones, all of these body parts, the giants I have, DNA tested, cat skin, bits and pieces, all of that happened 3,500 years ago. They're just flat as a pancake on one side normally. The flesh boiled off them, and the flesh boiled because of the impact of Venus into our atmosphere. It came at us for seven days with so much radiance that it boiled the waters. People tried to hide in caves and everything else, but as soon as it hit the atmosphere, it literally caused the the compression caused the hydrogen and oxygen to combine into water right just like rain only it came down in about 10,000 degrees because the Venus's magnetic field hit and it also created all kinds of magnetic discharges into our atmosphere causing 
these currents to flow through all of these conductive things, which everything conducts electricity. And if you have enough of it, it's going to go through everything. Now, what it did, I don't know. I, to recreate that, I cannot. I did try, and I made mud fossils. It doesn't take long. And even Yale says it could happen in hours to years, between hours and years. That, I'm sure, must have taken some years. My stuff, you know, I don't know, could have been hours. So anyway, this is, this is our history, and Genesis, yes, that is history. And so is Apollodorus, and so are the ancient myth, mythology. It's time to take a whole new look at our ancient past because that's going to be our future. You know, if you think you go on about your life after you die, and some people don't, they just think, I'm an atheist, I'm just going to dissolve and it'll be a case of clothes for me. No, I don't think that happens. Not, not in any of the texts, none of the texts. And every single text writes about giants and dragons and how the earth was formed out of these bodies. And then it got converted into, oh, no, 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 no. It's Darwin and all developed from slime, or all from a big bang of nothing turned into everything. And, and now we're living in a fantasy world. So I don't want to go down that route either, but I can't, I can't help myself. Everything is combined with everything else. And if you take one little thing and say, oh, look at that, it's geology. Have a nice day. No, then you've just missed everything, my friend, everything. All right, let's just get back to this. You see this cross bedding? They, they see this and they have to, oh, they washed up this way and this happened and then something happened. To go. That is muscle fibers. That's all it is, muscle fibers. And these different colorations are the colors of iron. These are different oxidation states of iron. And that is what muscles are primarily made to, to use is iron oxides. And they have all these different breaks, which are called sarcomeres. And depending upon where they are in a the body, they have different little variations like this. A straight sarcomere is just the blocks. Let me show you those. And those are at Petra. Hold on a second. Okay, so what is my claim? That all, of all those breaks we were seeing in the, that spot that the professor was showing are where the blood has run out from the glue that attached to sarcomeres. You see you have a white side and a reddish, well this red actually because it's mostly bloody over here. But the connective tissue slides back and forth. This is a, a contracted muscle and these are just laying out flat. But they erode on these lines and they just leave separate blocks which we have just seen in some of those pictures I just showed you. Now we can also see this all right, in biology, here is this is it right here. This is what they look like. This is it. All right, and they erode on these lines, and you see dark and light. Now, can we find that on the Earth? And it's gigantic. Yes, you can. All right, let me just point this out. Remember, I showed you those sarcomeres. This is Petra. This is inside the treasury of Petra. This is Petra from way long distance. This also is Petra above Petra. And this is Petra underneath showing what's above it here. Now, let's look at, most everybody knows what this is. Let's just look at Petra. All right, what do you see? You see this is all carved out really fabulously. What are all these little spots here and they have them over here too. What's that all about? And what are these little blocks? You see these blocks? They almost look like somebody cut them and laid them here. And you see this w one different pattern and this like blacky looking pattern and this is a different and then one after another. This one here is kind of eroded out. Alright, this my friends is nothing but an artery one gigantic artery and that was just saturated with blood and they carved the blood which is nothing more than clay it's nothing more than clay now let's look at this from a long distance can i show that that is an artery i think i can okay i know this is crazy stuff but it's true that right there is an artery these were where the the vest blood vessels came out from the main art arterial source. All of this 
is sarcomeres. Now let's look up close. You see all these blocks? Same blocks that are here. You see them? They're all over the place. Everywhere. All of these, this is all sarcomeres. You see that? That, that didn't happen by accident. These are all sarcomeres. And that was the main source of blood that fed this whole highway of blood vessels. And these, these sarcomeres did this at one time when whatever this creature was was alive and there were giants in the earth in those days. These are not the ones, the men of renown. The men of renown came afterwards. Do you remember that phrase? It said there were giants in the earth in those days. And after that, after that, when the sons of God went into the daughters of man, they had more giants. And they were the men of renown that we've always thought was kind of silly superheroes. And they were. They had, they, they had some kind of powers that were just incredible. And all these things have to be looked at in a new light. So don't forget, this is muscle tissue. This is where the blood flowed. Now let's see a little more about some of this muscle tissue. And let's see what's inside of this. All right, this is the kind of stuff that's basically muscle tissue and connective tissue and it pulls in muscles and so forth. This is kind of, you know, eroded. Maybe they carved them out for caves, I don't know. Um, now this is inside. This is inside the treasury. That's nothing but blood. You see that? That's where there's, you, I'm sure you could test this. And this is connective tissue and blood and, and the tubing probably somehow they nibbled into the tubing here and there. But they just carved what was there. And I, I, it must have been soft at the time that they did this. Because they did the same thing down in South America. All those wa walls were made from soft tissue. That I also have extreme, extreme details on. Now, as I said, 100% of the earth is made of giant creatures. This is a mountain. It's the same stuff. I don't know where it is. This is the back of the guy's van. And this is a red blood running out from some area. And this is the connective tissue. It's more than likely some part of the te uh, tendon. Because the tendons, like I say, they are tough. All right. This was from that professor's video showing these muscle sarcomeres that line that wall of that canyon. And this is a Coconino sandstone. And he's saying, was it a desert or a flood? And they're taking this as flood residue, which is not. It's body residue. And these are the colors of bodily tissues when they solidify because that's primarily blood all over the place in there. Now, this is the one I have here. It shows you know, down here shows these same muscle bundles broken off because down here is where the muscle ran. Here, again, is abrupt transition. That was that little piece I showed you, part of the tendons. And the main part of the tendon is right here, and it locks in with one big heavy-duty ball right up against the bone. That was a bone. Now, in the oceans, oceans tear away bones and just disintegrate them and the the tissue just turns into mud and you end up with the tendon you end up with the tendon right here and you see this you see that ball right there this was white when it, if, if, if it was all cleaned up and washed for a hundred years it would turn very white because it's very very tough connective tissue connective tissue is the white stuff now let me show you something about a tendon that's sticking up in the ocean remember this will erode away completely and this will erode away from there over completely and you'll see all kinds of little tendon straps coming out that were the ones that just give you a little bit of flexibility and then they interface with the muscle and that's what does all the work but these give you enough so you can jiggle around here and there and, and it doesn't just rip it off of the bone so this this is not millions of years in one picture this is like I don't know, however long it took him to die. There's that little ball that I talked about. This is tendon. And it's extremely tough. You see all the white? White is a really tough, tough, tough stuff. And 
this is that ball that locks in. The bone would have been right here. The bone would have been here. This is the abrupt transition from this tendinous stuff into the floppy muscle. And that's why this thing's just sticking up here. It's, just, it's exactly what it is. There's no question for in my mind whatsoever. So we know that's not right. All right, these are these up into Sedona, Arizona, in this one. It's all the same stuff. It's all biology. All right, let's look, the, and I'll point out all these features one more time. This is the bone. All right, and in the one that was in the in the ocean, it was coming right down like this, came right down like this. This is that curved spot I showed you before, where it anchors like in the and and it's got all these straps coming out. All right, you see it? This one right here, this one is the one that has the ball on it, right in the center of the tendon. You see it's got, a, it, it's, it's a, just one big heavy duty strap. And then there's all kinds of stuff at the top that weaves around and the same thing at the bottom. And the bone is here and it locks in with some glue and the glue and all that stuff goes away. The muscle, all that stuff goes away. And this is very red. When I first took this out, you know, when I first found this, I, I don't think it was even buried. But anyway, this was pink, and it was all this was really, really red. And I might have a picture of it. Hold on. This here is the muscle tissues that he was showing, and this is where it breaks. I think I have a better shot to show coming into the breaks. Yeah, this is pretty good. This is looking into the muscles, and they break just like the ones he had. And these, all of these little straps are the muscle sarcomeres, and in between them is where the, the fluids ran that serviced them. It's basically the same thing he was showing, only it's, you know, a smidge smaller. All right, see, it's all made in layers, and this is, and this was, again, from the Great Flood, it was all preserved very, very nicely. All right, this is the one that blew me away. I mean, there's no question that this is the same thing. This is it heading that direction. This is it heading that direction. This is the abrupt transition. This is the abrupt transition. All right, there's the bone on this one. All right, the bone here is missing. This is basically the same thing. It, it eroded away. That's all I can see. And... It, it really, that, that one there shocked me. You hear it is right here? That's that broken right there, and all of that eroded away, and this is the muscles turned into the sarcomeres. They have a weave to them, too. Everything is woven into everything else, and this was straight blood. Let me see if I can find that shot. All right, yeah, here it is. This is when it first came into the shop. I can't, I can't remember whether I dug it up or it was laying around or whatever. This is all still infused with blood. And this is where the blood comes from. You need a ton, a ton of blood to service all muscle. And this is where the muscle broke off out here. I call these abrupt transitions. And they seem to have three or four in the muscle area. The tendon only has one. It locks in with some glue to the bone, which would have been over here. Now, remember I showed you that big white strap and that ball? There it is right there. This is the really tough spot of the tendon. And you see how this is white and this is pink? The pink is because you have a lot of work to do over here. This thing is just like a rubber band. These things require almost no, no nutrition at all. I mean, once they're set up, they're, they, 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 everything requires something. And they have a little slippy juice in between them so, so they can gush around. But this was all 100% blood. And these are the, the arteries right there that brought this blood in to do the job. Just like at Petra. You know, here, even in the Quran, it says, Allah sends down rain from the sky giving life to the earth after its death. Which would be, mean it would as, as a corpse. Surely in this is a sign for those who listen, the very few. All right, the people I have talked about, Ovid and so forth, Herodotus, they took basically Ovid, 
uh, I'm sorry, uh, Hesiod's work, because he wrote, he was the first writer. It says, Hesiod was an ancient Greek poet, generally thought to have been active between 750 and 650 BC, around the same time as Homer. He's generally regarded by Western authors as the first written poet, and that just means author, in the Western tradition to regard himself as an individual persona with an active role to play in his subject. Hesiod was writing what he was told to write by the daughters of Zeus. They were called the Muses. He was out tending his flock on Mount Helicon. He couldn't write, he couldn't do any of that stuff. And the muses showed up and they said, we want you to write about our father, Zeus, so that the history is documented and we'll tell you what to write. And he says, I can't write. And they said, oh yes, you can. And they gave him some kind of a rod, they called it a magic rod. And he started writing. And he wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. And, um, and then everybody took that as the ancient history. And that's what the Greeks took it as, and they still do today. I'm speaking with people in Greece regularly, and they say, this is not mythology, this is our history. We, ta we, we teach that as history, and it is history. And what we are being taught today is just fantasy, it's comic book stuff. All right, you see this? They found these balls, and those are the little tendonenthesis balls, and they found them in a layer. They said, wow, we found them like a layer this thick. Here it is here. Um, dolomite clasts, and uh, in some places we've even found uh, beds of dolomite that are about that thick. All that is is the tendon balls, tiny, tiny little tendon balls. Hold on. Don't forget, the earth was alive, every single bit of it. These are the little tiny tendon balls he's talking about, these dolomite balls. All right, this is like one millimeter, micrometer, on a tiny, tiny, tiny little distance. So he's saying they found like beds of these balls. And that's, I understand that because they do, they come in little beds and they flattened out after the fluids left. Now this is, you see this? These are the same thing as this right here. All these balls have eroded out. I had some, I've been banned from all kinds of places. I went to a geology and I said, can you consider these as being biology? And I showed all these pictures and of course I got blocked. And all they are is the same thing. Here's the, literally skin or the fascia which coats, it's a membrane. That's the membrane. Below that is this all gooey stuff so you can float around and you're organs in your skin can jiggle around and all that, but it has to come back to where these balls are. And they're locked in into that stuff until the ocean comes up and erodes it away. And they have to go somewhere and here's where they go. And the red fleshy stuff has to go somewhere and it turns into mud. These are mud fossils. That's why I call them that. And these are the same little balls as these little balls right here. And they're everywhere. They're everywhere. They're all over South America, everywhere. But, but nobody talks about it. Well, they do talk about them. And, oh, who could ever figure this out? Well, it's not that hard if you pay attention. Okay, I guess I'll wrap it up at this. I don't know. If you didn't see what I showed you, I don't know what else I can show you. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, that's when you had Hercules and all these other guys. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. The ones that were written about by Hesiod, at the hest of Zeus's daughters, who were called the Muses. And it's, it, was, it was very well recorded, and I mean deeply. He had uh, the theogony and... Uh, ages, days and ages, or something like that. And he wrote he wrote all the, what they told him to write. And it, it appears to be supported by the evidence I found. Apollodorus wrote stuff based on Hesiod's works. And he wrote about Typhon being killed by Zeus and cut in his throat. And I found all of these things are based in fact. 
And if you haven't seen it yet, you better start digging around on my channel. You you find it everywhere. I did just did Typhon the other day. Well, I've done them ever. You know, I keep doing it because people won't pay attention, and and I only get a certain number of hits, and then that's it. Things go just stop. So people are not getting this information. People's not. I need more thumbs up. I need thumbs up. All right. I need thumbs up to get this thing going, because they apparently they put you out into the world where people can see you if you have enough thumbs up. That's all I can tell you. And I, I just don't get enough to to get anywhere. <laughs> But, you know, we need to get this out there. We should be teaching this. The kids should be understanding this. I'm not pointing this towards kids at all. But if you have kids, I would think about discussing this with them. And you, if you don't think about it yourself, I don't know why not. Everybody is in the same boat, so to speak. You come, you learn, you go somewhere else. That's my... Th that's my plan. Now, you can have your own plan and whatever you want. If you don't think you go anywhere else, do whatever you want. But I'm going to tell you right now, in my world, and what I see from what I have read and discovered, you better be good. You better not pout. All right, I'm telling you right now. I mean, you can pout as much as you want, but be good. <laughs> all right, I love you all. And um, I hope I see you on the other side.